This introduction to TDD is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 3.0 United States license. So uh, do what you want. Just let people know that you got it from me, Amos. Uh, I can be found on dirtyinformation.com. Uh, I'm adkron, A-D-K-R-O-N, on GitHub and on um, Twitter. Also, I work for a company called The Able Few, which is... Uh, where a lot of you will probably see this screencast. Uh, so today we're going to start out doing a little lesson in TDD. I figured we would write a stack or a um, philo uh, collection, uh, first in, last out. So very first thing we need is to create a gem file. So um, let's create a gem file. And in that gem file, I um, we're going to use our spec. And let's go ahead and add in guard and guard our spec. So guard and guard our spec are for running tests in the background as files change. So we will actually use tmux also. Um, just so that we can have that running in the background. So first we will file install so that we get all of the right dependencies. Um, and then we will say bundle exec guard init our spec. And we're gonna do a little editing on that, but first we'll open, get tmux running. tmux-2, which forces it in a 256 color mode. And um, new session, and we will call that session T lesson. How about that? Can't establish session. I don't know what's going on. It seems to be working. So first, I will change the name of this to um, editor. I like to call it editor in case I'm working with somebody that uses Emacs or anything like that instead of them. And we will jump into our Vim and first edit our guard file, which likes to put a bunch of stuff in here that we don't really need at this point. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of all that. Um, and then uh, start a new window, bundle, exec, guard. Which will start out um, here in a second, but while we're waiting on that, we're going to go ahead and start on our file work here. So first things first, we need a spec directory, and inside of that spec directory, we will create a how about philo spec .rb. So philo spec does nothing right now. Uh, let's make it require philo. How's that sound? And we will check our test over here. Um, RBM use 1.3. Let's try to start this again. Make sure I'm using the right Ruby. I am not going to edit this. I'm going to let you go through the troubles and trials that I go through. Okay, so you'll notice in the bottom left, it did turn the panel red. Um, that means that we have a failure. Uh, it actually says that we're missing a dependency, rbfs event. So let's go fix that in our gem file. gem rbfs event. And we'll go ahead and bundle. at guard, cross our fingers that we can just get this done and not keep going back and forth here. It'd be a pretty boring screencast. This is my first screencast, so bear with me. If I didn't already say that, I might say it five or six more times. So everything seems to be working now. We um, have philo spec, and our one of the side effects is uh, of our spec is that our spec will automatically add a lib directory to your uh, path 
so we don't have to do require relative or anything like that and we will create that um, that philo rb file and guard is now working so let's let's split these panes and do our tests on one side and our philo on the other side. Describe. So let's call the class philo just to stick with our naming scheme here. And we now have a failure. Uh, uninitialized constant philo. Well, that's pretty easy to take care of. Let's create our class now. And I am going to take very simple little steps like this all the way through uh, and force the test to drive everything out, force the test to have failures in order to um, move on to the next step. So the simplest possible thing, uh, let's start out with um, newly initiated, initialized, initialized. I'm okay with that. Let's see. Um, philo. Let's try to make it sound more like English. That is newly initialized. And it should be empty. I think it's probably going to be one of the easiest things. Um, actually, let's add uh, the things that a um, stack would use. So, um, say it has empty. It has a push, it has pop, and size. Let's just stick with those four for now. Um, we do have a failure. Let's pop over here and see what it is. Undefined method empty. Uh, well, in TDD, what you need to do is either make the test pass or change its uh, error message. So we're actually just going to change the error message because we want to make sure that our tests are failing for the right reason. Um, you will, I'll probably end up doing it in here. I will have a typo or something like that, and I will catch it because the test um, is failing for the right reason. Also, there, um, I've seen unfortunate things where uh, people are using double equal. Actually, I'll uh, I'll show it when we get there. So the very first thing should be empty. True. That works for me. And let's see. If you look at the bottom left, it greened up. It is no longer red down there. And just to make sure, there we go. I will not be bouncing back and forth anymore. If it turns green, I will assume that it's good and move on. Um, so. It uh, has a size of zero. So what I've seen before is someone will say subject dot size equals zero. And we will get a failure because size is undefined. So let's go back and define size, def size. And this right here will show you why we take tiny steps. Whoa, it's failing, or it's passing. That's strange. Oh, wait, here's the problem. I forgot to say should. So therefore, I was having true or false, but it wasn't actually an exception. Um, and so it was not actually a test failure because there was no expectation. And now I get the proper failure that I was looking for. Expected zero, got nil. So let's put in zero, because that's the easiest way to fix it, or simplest way. And okay, so we're green again. So let's let's think. What is the next simplest thing? Uh, if we do push, we have to have something else. We have to have side effects. It has to adjust empty and size. Um, if we want to see size and empty work, we have to have push. Uh, pop, though, 
when we pop from an empty queue, let's say that it raises an exception. So that would be a, a pretty simple test for us to write. Um, we'll say it raises, raises an a philo empty error when expect subject dot pop to raise error philo empty error make sure that it fails because when we write a test it should fail um, uninitialized constant philo empty error so let's fix that There we go. I expected philo empty error got no method error, no method pop. So we need to add the method pop here. Now method pop. Uh, we expected philo empty error, but nothing was raised. So the easy, the simplest way to fix this is to raise our error. All right, so we're green again. Um, let's see, the next thing, well, we're gonna actually have to get to push before we can change any of those states. So how about we say, describe pushing a new element. Um, so we will create a new element. Um, I will see people often do like that there, and I have had um, a lot of uh, seasoned developers actually see this and think that, okay, this thing holds integers or something like that. So I like to use object.new because I think that it says, hey, this guy can hold anything. Um, before do subject.push, actually, let's not do that. Let's not do it before. Um, it uh, increases the size by one. So expect subject dot push new element to change subject dot size. And we hope that fails. Let's go make sure. Oh, and it did. Undefined method push. Def push. And we are red with wrong number of arguments. Oh yeah, push takes in a value and element now results should have been changed by one but was changed by zero so we need to increase our size and in order to do that we're going to need a little more initialize initialize e initialize I can't spell uh, at size equals zero. Uh, replace at size. Now this, we should still end up with one failure. There should be no changes. OK, 
okay just want to make sure that we still end up in the same place where we were and now when we push we say plus equals one and we are green again um, and uh, no longer be empty so subject dot push new element sub, subject dot should not be empty sounds like my wonderful children are home so you guys may get to hear them here in a second um, so I expect it to no longer be empty which empty is true all the time, so now we will base our empty on size. Dad. Hi, baby. Ah. I missed you. I missed you too. Did you have fun camping? Yeah. Can you say hi to everybody? No? I'm recording something for people. <laughs> All right, so um, I think that we're we're good on those. I don't want to add in a popping um, inside of the pushing. Can you shut that door, sweetheart? Thank you. And so we are going to move on to a new context. Now that we know that we can add an element, let's create a new context of uh, Philo with one element. Okay, and. Um, I think that we don't really need to test size again. We've already seen the size increase. We don't need to test empty. We've already seen empty change. So the next thing that um, could possibly fail on us is that uh, popping of an element needs to return the element. Uh, plus there is popping of an element should decrease the size. So, so let's write these two tests. Describe popping the element. Um, it, I'm, I'm going to forego the strings for now, it's just for brevity, so, um, expect subject, so, oh, I guess we actually need to make and put it into our subject element. Push element. Expect subject dot pop to change subject dot size by negative one this time because we want it to reduce. Uh, the first time I ever used this, I um, made the in my mind, I said, oh, it should change by one, um, and had a moment to figure out what the heck was going on and why it was broke. Um, oh, I kind of glossed over that. This is, we got our empty air, and we shouldn't have. Um, but anyway, I was trying to figure out why it was broken. Now, it makes sense that it's a negative one and not one, now that I know, but at first it, it um, kind of threw me for a loop, but I, I prefer it this way. Um, if empty, and we want it to reduce the size by one. All right, green again. Um, and actually, I might even suggest uh, checking in at little points along the way into Git or anything like that so that it's easy to roll yourself back. And then we also want to make sure that when we pop an element, subject.pop, that it's actually the element that we passed in. And 
and right now it is not. We are getting a fixed num back because we are getting our size back. Uh, and then, so we need to um, return our element, but we are not currently storing an element. So that means push needs to store an element. And pop will return that element. All of our tests should green up at this point. I hope. Good. All right, so next thing, we've got popping an element, what it does, we've got one element. Everything seems to be going pretty good. Uh, now, what happens when we have two elements? So let first element equal object dot new. Let second element equal object dot new for do subject dot push first element yank that paste it change to underscore second element so we need a test for this that fails. How about, um, I would like to test the order at which these things get popped off. So, um, scribe popping the elements. Um, it, uh, return Or, no. How about we just say Philo order? Subject dot pop dot should be second element and should be actually, um, how about? We just test that for now. Returns the last element added first. And everything's green. So maybe it returns the next element down and put all yeah. subject dot pop subject dot pop dot should be first should be first element. I believe that that we can um, say that so the first one that pops off would be the second element it would be removed and then the first element would be popped off and now we have a problem but I'm not real sure what it is because they both just say object uh, unless you should and and in tune with the VM you probably won't know uh, which one of those is which either so let's try to make that a little more clear um, we'll say change inner boom to uh, let's use our spec stubs. They are great for this. Um, and then change inner stub second element. Now our failure has a little more. I expected first element, but got second element, so we can kind of tell what's going on a little nicer here. So now we actually need to store these, and let's say we don't have an array, so we're going to do a linked list. struct.new um, value and Next. So every element would have a value and an extent. And 
first thing we do is when we push that on, let's say um, at or node.new element and the old top. Uh oh, we failed a lot more tests. Oh, it's because we need to return our value here. This should get us back down to that one failure. Back down to one failure, first element, second element. So, now we need to make sure that we remove the old element. So we know already that um, we need a something to hold on to the value that we're going to return. And then let's say the new element, actually, um, yeah, the new element is equal to the old elements next, and that should move us down the list. And then we'll return that popped value. And we're all green again, but I think that we need to do a little refactoring here. Um, first thing, happy with this at element. I think that it's a horrible name now. Element. So I think that to go with the um, Philo stack idea, we will call it top. So let's replace that, and I can't spell apparently. Percent s slash mint slash at top. There we go. And because we have all of our tests, we can now refactor and not worry about accidentally breaking something. So change that to top, and then I'm not. This this method is a little long and nasty to me so let's let's take use of um, Ruby's multi-assignment here so we'll do J and I would probably be okay with stopping here, but if we wanted to, um, we can go ahead and take, let's, let's just do this for fun. Let's uh, enjoy the splat. So if we change this to be two array and we make it value and next, um, which now we need to change next because unfortunately next is a keyword. So let's change next to next pointer. Uh, or next node, how about that, next node. And then down here, the dollar sign. If you want to splat that, splat node, oh, node, splat top, that will actually call to array and break it up into pieces. Actually, a struct may do that. And because we have tests, we can find out if that's built directly into struct or not. So how about comment some things out here, or take them out, find out. I don't know if struct does that or not. It appears so. I'm going to run them all again just to make sure. All right, so struct already has a tool ARY built in. Um, that's what Ruby uses whenever you're using the splat operator. And if we really want to make it even more cryptic for the next person that comes along, which will probably be us in six months and we won't remember why this works. Um, oh. Apparently you can't do the implicit splat. So maybe that's why we need ARY. Let's try, oops, value, def ARY. 
two ary, and we'll do what we were value next node. There we go. Now we're back. And clean up one more thing. Let's add an adder reader for size. And get rid of this guy. So there you have it, complete it, uh, and I will uh, split this with the guard file so we can see our um, gem file, and you can see that. I will actually load all this up on GitHub so that you guys can get at it, look at it, play with it, see what you think. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.